What's up Spartans? OCR guy here again with a race recap video for you. This video was a little difficult to make for reasons I'll explain in a second, but I think it's evolved into something a little bit better than I first thought of. In this video, I'll be going over how you can overcome the obstacles that I encountered in the stadium sprint, as well as my own experience within the race. The problem with this video was, I walked to the starting line with the GoPro that I thought was fully charged. It ran for a little bit and it ran and it ran, and then it died. I thought it was out of luck for the video, but as it had turned out, some of the other racers that day had used their own GoPros to upload some fantastic footage on the YouTube of the race. For the purpose of this video today, I'll go ahead and credit them at the bottom and use their footage as a visual for some of the things I'm going to be talking about. One of the most difficult parts of the race for me were the numerous low stair crawls all throughout the course, probably 40 to 45 flights of them. My main focus here to get through the obstacle was to keep my body stable and not add in any extraneous motion, but more importantly to keep my breathing rhythmic to avoid tiring out in the middle of the course. Even so, I had to stop for a few seconds and take a deep breath a couple of times. It really took a toll on my calves and quads, but my legs were still fresh enough for the countless other stairs, involving running up and down or doing the sandbag carry. To try and minimize the cardiovascular stress, I tried putting as much weight on my upper body as I could. As for my lower body, I tried activating my glutes, keeping my hips up and going up two stairs at a time. Even with my stops, this method kept me crawling at a pretty good rate, but bottlenecking of people on the stairs made it a little tough to progress sometimes. In preparing for the crazy amount of stairs you might find in a stadium sprint, HIIT training or high intensity interval training will be at the center of your work to keep your heart rate from spiking and wearing you out. Plyometrics such as box jump, shuffling, or even mountain climbers would help you here as well to increase your overall stability, power, and ease of mobility. Bear crawls are also at the heart of the low stair crawl movement, so it would be extra beneficial to do that as well. Todd Durkin's channel on YouTube has a great in-depth video of the benefits of the bear crawl if you're interested in learning more. The next thing we'll talk about is walls. I wanted to bring this up because of how the rest of the race could impact your performance here without proper technique. Now, most people don't find the walls to be extremely challenging, but utilizing each part of your body in your wall climbing can turn your time spent here next to nothing. If you've got the upper body strength, I prefer the method of just doing a body up, which is basically combining a pull up and a chest dip, and then squeezing my core to throw my legs over the wall. For those looking for something different though, probably one of the better methods is to grab the wall, then hook one heel on the top, allowing you to pull yourself up and over. The channel Mudsicle has a video visualizing the technique I just described and some others if you'd like to look into the obstacle. No! I don't want that! Now maybe it was just this race or the gloves I had on, but I think I was able to pretty much solidify my thoughts on wearing gloves after falling off the multi-rig. Gloves usually provide less friction between your hands and whatever you're grabbing onto, making the grip strength and calluses you built up less than useful. I had worn one because a few days before, I decided to train and ended up breaking a quarter size callus on my hand. While the bandage and glove kept it from getting any worse, it definitely impacted my race performance negatively. There wasn't even any mud here. For a regular Spartan race, gloves might have an even worse effect on your performance. All in all though, the course did a good job at creating a challenge for everyone, especially those who keep their cardio to just running. The elevation changes and obstacles coming on every part of your body made it a race where both the focused athlete and a jack of all trades could excel. As for other parts of the race though, the expo was about what you'd expect from any other Spartan race with the vendors handing out free samples and whatnot. The volunteer shift I attended was well set up and fun even though at times I wanted to just dip. I give the race a 4.5 out of 5. And again guys, thanks for watching my video. Leave a like and subscribe to see more informative and not so informative videos. And comment with your suggestions for the future. Stay strong, but for now, peace out. What, people are always like, oh my god, Jordan, you're so funny, but you aren't? Uh, I think.